This is For the Better, a podcast for those working to affect change within their team, organization, or community. I'm your host, Ben Cash. Thanks for tuning into the podcast, where we talk with leaders and change makers from purpose driven organizations and discuss the great things they're doing. Uh, this podcast is produced by Reason One, a full service digital agency helping those who do good do better. Today's guests are husband and wife and co owners of Site C, a local Charleston retail shop and coffee bar. Hey, Joel and Allison. Cheers. Hello. It's Joel, Joel uh, and Allison uh, uh, are uh, actually, I go way back with Joel. Um, uh, and I think with both of you, I was a, maybe an early Kickstarter investor in uh, oh, yeah. Site C, right? And in fact, hold on, I got to represent. <laughs> there they are. Yay! Site there C socks are. right here. Socks. I got the swag. I had to, I had to, to represent today. Both wore Site C t-shirts and I was like, that's a little Ooh. too nerdy for like, <laughs> yeah. both of us to wear our brand tees to this interview. Like promo, <laughs> hard, hardcore promos. I got it. Yeah. Um, Speaking of that, sightseeshop.com, uh, if you want to learn more about who they are in the business. Um, so besides you two being some of my favorite humans, mm -hmm. uh, and I knew it would be an enjoyable conversation, there's actually something I really wanted to explore with you two. Um, obviously, I was around when you started the business and you know, um, was an early supporter. Um, but I've seen how you have grown the business, built your brand, you know, vehicle for the community, for change, supporting other entrepreneurs. Um, yeah. And when I think about, like, there's a line on your website, like the opening line on one of the pages that's, that says, Site C is a retail shop and coffee bar that is greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah, that's it. What do you mean by? What do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot. You want to, I can. You know, it's really funny because we wrote that line. I, before we even had that was 2018. a brick and mortar shawl. Yeah. When we were still a pop-up concept. So we just, we literally had like a hundred dollar like kitchen cart off of like Wayfair or something that we used nice. as a coffee cart. Yeah. And uh did pop up some beacons and we but you know while we were doing that we like built a whole Shopify site and tried to make ourselves sound like really legit even yeah. though we were not even a real a real thing <laughs> and it, so it's funny to think about how we wrote that like when we knew nothing we were so naive we were but that, little kids. the words that we wrote about who we are and this business that we've envisioning are really still so true and I think have even become more true as we've had a brick and mortar as we've built a team as we've grown because I think like operating in a more official and tangible way has actually pushed us to either make those words ring true or not yeah um, walk the walk yeah so I think even from the very beginning, we, we wanted to have a business, a brand, a physical space that could be a meaningful part of the community, that could be a platform for us to be engaged in conversations that could shape the future of Charleston. Even back in, you know, when we first had the inkling of the idea for Site C in 2016. 16 yeah um you know we saw charleston evolving in a way that really was pushing out a lot of local retail and local spaces that were community hubs um and the types of places that when we travel to other cities we always try to seek out like where are, where are the local people hanging out so we saw that evolution and and really didn't just want to be a store, didn't just want to be a coffee shop. Yeah. We wanted to be a place that was a special part of someone's day, yeah. that was welcoming, that was um, hopefully helpful in some way in creating what 
city of Charleston to look like um, from a business and neighborhood perspective. So that's yeah. it. I think the original intent of that <laughs> statement. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you asking the question it makes me think about it. And I haven't ever really, I haven't really thought about it in this way, but pretty much what's ever, what's on our about page, like starting with that line and what comes underneath and then the mission section beneath yeah. that mm-hmm. was written in like the spring, summer of 2018. By Allison, right? I mean, no, <laughs> I mean, come on. I know who the writer in this family is. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You know. <laughs> but the, to read it, you, you don't realize that at that time, we hadn't even done a pop-up yet. Like, it was years oh, wow. until we had a real brick and mortar. And the, the way that we were thinking about what we were starting was already, like, kind of grounded in this future that we didn't, we didn't know how we were going to get there but we knew why we were going to attempt it um, yeah. and it was kind of along the way. And I think something also to underscore like greater than the sum of its parts and what we had in mind, it's important. I think it speaks volumes that our LLC name in that we registered in, I think <laughs> May, 2018 is site C global LLC. <laughs> Is that like prestige worldwide? <laughs> yeah, Jet yeah. Brothers reference. I, the idea that if somebody thought we opened a coffee shop, they just don't know us that well. Right. Um, and so from the very beginning, the sense of like mission and bigger um, and, and impact was like part of it, even though the physical manifestation of it was basically a couple playlists and a series of Instagram posts. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because you, you mentioned the rest of the copy on the, on the site. The one thing that struck me was shops must become communities, welcoming spaces where engaging conversation is as easy to find as your next purchase. And when I think about your brand now, and I think about your community advocacy, I think about, you, you know, um, everything that you're doing and, and where I've, I've seen you involved, where I've heard you, I turn on a podcast, there's Joel or Allison or Allison, you just spoke <laughs> at Pecha Kucha. Like, like it's, it, you know, 120, 125 and a half line street is this tiny box, but the, but it feels so much bigger in what you're creating. Oh God. Uh-huh. That means a yeah, lot. Okay. Yeah. You can pay me later. <laughs> Free coffee. It Free feels coffee. Much bigger on our shoulders yeah. as well than a tiny box. So <laughs> amazing how much work goes into four our feet on a little corner. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. it's so it was so interesting that you say that you know this was something that you wrote before you even did the pop ups and that you had this vision for it, <clears throat> and then it, and then uh, you know uh, Allison, you were saying that it kind of you felt like you had to kind of walk the walk and then live up to this sort of manifesto, if you will, that you put out there. Um, I know for, like in, in reason one, it's this um, chicken or egg self-fulfilling kind of thing where I know that like the more that I put statements out, the more I lean in, mm-hmm. the more it actually changes me. And I was not expecting that. Yeah. But, um. And then I want to lean in more and it's this sort of, yeah. you know, um, so to that end, I'm, I'm curious, you know, it, uh, from what your aspirations were then to, you know, what you would answer now, yeah. why, why does your business exist? Why does Site C exist? Gosh. Now. It's like, a, I mean, <laughs> I have just, just to level all of it. <laughs> World <laughs> hunger. Assumption. Yeah that Sightsee is <laughs> successful and we, we like that. And so when we're asking like, why does it exist? It's like, what are we using all this great power that, to do? <laughs> but really on like a Wednesday afternoon when we haven't seen a customer in like an hour and a half, the question is like, why, why are, are we, <laughs> why do we exist <laughs> if no one cares? Yeah. So, <laughs> that is very much another reality this entire thing. <laughs> T- totally but i also look at the, the, the i to to uh yes and that uh or to yes but that uh <laughs> i um you know i i look at for example just the blog 
content on your website, uh, yeah. you know, the things that you've done with city council for the, uh, the bid, uh, you know, for the, you know, um, the racial conciliation, you know, committee. Yeah. Uh, and then just the, the engagement you've had, um, that doesn't feel just like you're slinging coffee. That, yeah. 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 You're yeah. absolutely right. And we're not. I, and, and I don't, and I don't think that's, and I don't think that's um, just like Joel and Allison on the side kind of want to, you know, support it. This feels like, it feels like your, you know, your work and your life are one and the same, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's such a good point. I mean, yeah. what yeah. I take that question to be is like, how, well, there are so many different ways to run a business. Why, and it's clear that the way that we engage with our community isn't just a hobby. We see it as right. like part of what it means to run a business for us. Right. And so like, why is that, that we see it that way? Um, and I, I could kick this off. Sure. I, I think yeah. about that all the time is that there, so this is, I think I need to credit, it, it could have been a conversation with you. It could have been a conversation with Gray Somerville, one of the great yeah. like, business thinkers in this community that I count you both in that, in that category of was the observation that like there are a finite number of institutions in society. There's like education and there's government and um, other things. But business, yeah. when you look at all of those, the, com the business sector is the only one that has like generative power that has mm -hmm. freedom and the ability to create that education right. can teach, institutions can like direct, but it's only businesses that have that kind of like rogue freedom to affect society in a, in a creative and novel way. And so that for me is like something that I don't want to waste. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think it's a unique value. And I think any business that fails to see the role that they are uniquely able to play in society is right. like not living up to like, I mean, I don't want to, not living up to the, the demand or the potential that they have been given the privilege to like, to operate out of. And so specifically, I'll take like a sharp left on this, like a, okay. sharp, sharp, a sharp dive and hope it doesn't, it doesn't uh, fall flat. But like, to me, God, well, let me, can I pause just one? I, I know I'm like- Pause, do it. What do you need to do? <laughs> the, thing that I, the thing that I think is important from, that I, to, to, to disclaim about this is that when we were talking about the Sightsee origin story, there's nothing about the brand or the, what you experience of Sightsee, particularly from an activist perspective now, that was like a, not something we were into before. Mm -hmm. We just- we hadn't experienced a trigger that really clarified and set the stage for having to step up and right. be where we kind of abstractly thought of ourselves as supporting. And I will, I, there's a difference at least, and I'm speaking for myself, but I don't mean to cut you out of it. But for me personally, truly the, the George Floyd killing and the subsequent kind of like, um, height of the 2020 Black Lives Matter movement, the civil, um, anyway, the, the, the social uh, or, or civil rights movement of, of, unfortunately, of 2020 kind of was a uh, tipping, was a, a changing point. Um, yeah. And so we, and for me, the things that we always kind of were vaguely in, in support of had an opportunity to like materially act on. And there was no going back after that point. And so what I'm about to say about how I think about doing business in Charleston mm -hmm. is, is, is reflective of a change that took place in 2020, not some like conviction that I have always had, yeah. if, that, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And so for me, in Charleston uniquely, the history of Charleston just demands of any business that is making money in what Charleston has been created is that you are making money from the unpaid labor, unpaid labor of enslaved black citizens of its time. And to ignore that, 
to think of yourself as making money that you earned yeah. um, is is uh, and to making money that the that everybody isn't casting an image of Charleston that was built by this community, right? And to feel as though you can just cherry pick that money and right. not um, actively participate in righting the wrongs of how that uh, inequity was through policy affected over you know hundreds of years. Anyway, so I think of business as generative and then specifically in Charleston, it is in kind of imperative that particularly as a white business, that you have the humility and recognition of why it is that anybody wants to come to Charleston, that Charleston is a place, that there's anything great about it. And that is uh, entirely thanks to the black community. And so I feel that, at least for myself, when I speak out and act and am motivated in that regard, it is out of like a deep gratitude um, that what I have is not entirely my own. Um, mm-hmm. And anyway, so that's my, that's kind of a long winded way of saying specifically on that topic as a white business owner in Charleston. Yeah. It needs to be part of how you allocate your time and your money and your, and your attention um, and to not just like, kind of take the money and yeah I, I will tap on too that i think have recognized in the almost two and a half years since opening that we have uniquely built a community around what we're doing and we also i will say that community is majority white people and majority white people who feel very comfortable coming into a like on the surface very like white space with two like straight hetero married white owners yeah and we recognize that those people are comfortable that audience is comfortable like being in this sort of shared comfortable space yeah, this is such right. a cute job and yeah like it's 125 and a half it's a little cottage it's so cute i'm gonna go get my latte and like sleep for me yeah it's comfortable for me and if we can start to engage in you know some conversations that are uncomfortable if it's a new conversation for you which for the black community members here in Charleston these are not new conversations and they're not uncomfortable they're exhausting yeah we can like start to have some of these conversations and be really open about our viewpoints and it maybe makes two or three or five other white privileged folks in our community start to think or read or engage what's happening in racial justice here in Charleston then and then those people go and are like coming to city council meetings and are telling their friends to submit public comment that's really powerful and not that we're like trying to like bait and switch our customers giving a shit yeah but it's like this I just view it as this very interesting and unique and like different sort of entry point into engaging in social issues that isn't like a news outlet or Mm -hmm. a relative or someone lecturing at you. It's just like It's not somewhere you would expect. Like Right. Well, I I think the the thing for me that just to sort of give a a specific example was, you know, there was the report on, um, uh, you know, that was produced by the special commission um, for racial reconciliation. uh, And it produced a a really wide ranging report uh, with a lot of detail on, you know, economic and social injustice uh, and health issues, so many different things, right? About how we can take Charleston into the future and be uh, equitable, and um mm-hmm. you know reconcile 
what you know the past as well, right? As, as much as that's possible. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a lot of information. And in this day and age of misinformation, uh, mm -hmm. I you know when there's confusion, people who are against this or who want to sow division will grab on to that confusion. Mm -hmm. And I think what was so what was great about what you did with when that report came out was you took it and you know uh, you know allison with your amazing writing skills <laughs> you know uh, took that thing and boiled it down to something that was understandable and categorized and and i know that when when i learned about it i went and read it right mm -hmm. it was it was it was there it was accessible and when then when the subsequent city council meetings came up and people were you know um voicing support or opposition or talking about it and discussing it and providing public public feedback. Um, I was referencing points from that report, or sorry, from your simplified version because it was so well laid out and, uh, and, and so it was a tool to help further others and do that, to, 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 to do that and to, to educate, to, yeah. you know, and, and that was, and that's just one a simple example, but I think that's yeah. that's yeah. The, you know take the time to do that uh, and use your your audience, your customers, your brand as as a way to get that message out and to to increase support and awareness. You know, I think that's a very tactical sort of you know uh, outcome for for what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think you talk about a lot. I mean, there's issues that anyone can give a shit about in the world right now in their own communities and it can feel really overwhelming to know where to start or know how you can have an impact or be productive and so for us we try to think about what are the skill sets that we have what are we what are we good at what's interesting to us that we know it's not going to become boring or exhausting or overwhelming because it's something in our wheelhouse that we know how to do and we can continue to do it and so writing and marketing and community building some of these things that we've done in the past and with Saiti those are ways that we can engage in activism that are familiar to us that we feel confident in that aren't um yeah you know a new thing to take on entirely mm -hmm. yeah i mean some of the advocacy work that we're trying to do is new for us in itself and the like vocabulary and whatnot that we are constantly trying to learn and get better at that's all new but at least like writing a blog post coming up with a script for public comment like organizing here's the call-in number like that kind of thing right yeah. No, and right. can hopefully be more impactful by latching onto those. Things. Yeah, and I and I know that that those kind of things take a lot of time, right? And so, yeah. one of the things that that we struggle with in you know in, in running a business and also using that business as a vehicle, right, yeah. is is just balancing the things, right? Because you know we we make websites, right, yeah. but we also have a scholarship program that we're trying to you know, get yeah. off the ground and, 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 and each of those things takes a lot of time and investment. And then to, to your point earlier about like, you know, well, it's, you know, three o'clock on a Wednesday and, you know, I got to sell some coffee, you know, like yeah. how, how do you balance um, running a business, which is already hard enough right, with the time and, and, and energy to also be advocates and, and use that business as a vehicle? Like, how do you balance that? I mean, I kind of think it's like a little bit of a best like game analogy, checkers, something where you're moving things around. Like yeah. there's a never ending to-do list of things to work on for our business. Um, and then it feels like a never ending to-do list of things that we want to engage in socially or in our community. And it's honestly just a daily practice of like what can be shifted over here to get done later and what do I need to do right now and um and that means 
sometimes things fall way down on the totem pole like tasks getting done and yeah i mean i, I, I yeah i don't know that we really mastered that <laughs> <laughs> we haven't either we haven't either it's uh, a lot of free yeah. time maybe is the answer <laughs> yeah i think well there's two there's a couple things one like I can like what you just said and the idea of like it takes so much time and you've got business things to run. It truly does have a material impact. Like we have dedicated so like a lot of time to these kinds of things at one form or another, starting, you know, with how many hours we spent perfecting the exact language for a public letter about mm-hmm. Lord Charleston and you know, everything on that like we, I completely dropped the ball on filing sales tax or not, uh, uh, empo- so, uh, unemployment tax in South Carolina. We ended up having to pay like a thousand dollar fine for a higher tax rate yeah, that's in large part because like real we, game. exactly. Real, so it, we it, lose the game sometimes. sometimes. <laughs> and, and like customerized marketing, like there's just a lot of truly functional elements of the business that it's not like oh you know i don't know how we do it but we always pull it off it's like no sometimes we just like are really penalized um for for not but do do you think that's i mean i know um uh there's a quote from um former ceo of patagonia who talked about um you know like um uh customers are advocates for brands because they build in like an emotional connection with the core purpose right um and it's that the business creates value beyond just product quality and experience right that and that and that that's kind of like that's ultimately what is customer loyalty and and what you know bond you know um, that you you believe the same that you have shared beliefs, right? And that draws you to brands, draws you to things, which is as we see in a, in, a, in a lot of situations now with social change and in a, in a variety of ways, um, people either being aligned with or not aligned with uh, many brands. And so I wonder, you know, do, do you see like is walking the walk also part of your part of what makes your business successful yeah i can i i'll lead that off and then yeah. tee up something that we have coming that i think kind of yeah. answers that question but sure. the, the first thing i wanted to say just to like kind of finishing the thought and segueing into this around balancing what you know the the activism and the and the business is it like for the last since 2020, which is when I would really like summer of 2020, and we can kind of like the the CVB post was kind of the first kind of what you were describing early on about like you say stuff, and then you end up doing stuff, and that makes you say more stuff. That was the first uh, like domino or the where that flywheel began. Yeah, for and for people who don't know, oh, right. like, he's referencing we wrote an op ed. Yes, yeah, it. that's right. A, a letter um, in the local indie paper um, saying that we were resigning from sort of the business membership of the local tourism bureau and why and um, and some calls to action for the Trust and Visitors Bureau to um, tell a more honest story about the racist history of Charleston um and that was um really the first like big statement that we had made like up in that of that nature um publicly and um yeah. and, and in the paper too so which yeah became like what you were saying Okay, we said it. Now, what do we? And we didn't. We didn't want to be. Yeah, thank you. That's yeah, exactly. Um, and we didn't want to be yet another business that uh made some big flourish that summer and then just kind of moved on once people changed their social media uh thing to to a black 
graphic uh, player right. like on Tuesday yeah. and then and then move yeah. on. Um, and but the where kind of where I was going at not to drag it out too much is that when I reflect on it, well, the way that we have behaved has been somewhat by nature very active almost mm -hmm. like we have been guided by this this like like if we see a bat signal go up that we think we are uniquely able to respond to we will jump into action so it's not like we're at every protest um we attend what we what we can but that's not like the best use of our power time right um but when we see like people not understanding what is about to be up for vote, then we're like, all right, we need to do something about this. Right. And so with the city council, with this human affairs and racial conciliation commission, I won't give like the full backstory. That has been one where we didn't, it wasn't like we sat down in 2020 and mapped out like how we were to balance fighting for that with this. It's more just been right. like, when that reaches this kind of critical point where it feels like we can make an impact, we set aside time to do it. And it's and it's kind of been that over and over again. Like the bid is a great example. We right. did not know about the bid until like the week between Christmas and New Year. And for those who are not aware, uh, bid is business improvement district, That's which is something that uh, uh, King Street um, businesses wanted to pass and change the way that uh, businesses can uh, watch yeah. it. You you you'll you'll do a better job. <laughs> like you. Well, my my short answer is that it like is state sponsored gentrification that creates a para governmental organization who has the power to define who is and is not welcome in public spaces. I think whenever you hear a group of white people across the national yeah, there's maybe clean and safe alarm bells that. Yeah, and why so. maintaining privilege? Exactly. <laughs> so, so I sorry to draw this out, but the the thing that draw, I was draw draw Joel, just go ahead. Is, it's all good. Up, uh, we have it's kind of been like the bad signal has gone up. We've gone out. Then we've kind of tried to keep our, you know, we and then we keep our. We're Bruce Wayne most of the time, so to speak. <laughs> and then we gotta, you know, write something, design something, and and now that this commission has passed, we're in a place in which we've kind of established that this is part of who Sightsee is now. We like are active. It's it's very weird when people will like cite where to stay in touch about things. And it's us as like a small business and explicit like activist outlets. Um, and it's like, why, which of these is not like the other, but it's just who we are now. And right. so we're actively having to think about how do we make this sustainable? Because the last couple of years, all the way through February and vote have like, anytime this kind of thing happens has been tremendously um, on us individually, our business, our relationship, it's not sustainable. And, um, and so we're, we're trying to figure out how to maintain that as part of the brand that we care about, not in like a marketing way, but just like, this is who we are now. We don't right. want to stop. But also, how can we sustainably run a business and live whole human lives? And yeah. say, as, as of right now, we don't have that like yeah. right now we don't well, that's that's the that's the old misnomer right you think oh i'll start my own business and i'll get to set my own hours those well, hours end up being 24 7 yeah oh, exactly yeah. they're set yeah. <laughs> can't be more than 24 and in a day <laughs> yeah <laughs> but so the and then to bring that all the way around and then i'm not i don't want to i don't want to dominate this too much but the idea of like what you're saying about the patagonia uh co-founder is that we have develop this sense of just like you're either with us or against us sort of and it has made what otherwise would be like a very broadly flat palatable brand into something that like somebody just might not be on board with. Uh, right. and, that's okay. and that's okay and right. so owning that exactly i think that vision is 
would not have been made that thought process first started because first start a business so just funny with you yeah and right opened like there were days where we would literally our sales would be like seven five dollars in that ten was hours when we were open all day from eight to six and have anything you know so it's like this isn't gonna work yeah right. know, like it literally anyone who wants to come in here and come in here maybe if like prom had walked in i would have i would probably have put my name away in 2019 <laughs> yeah but like anyone else like just buy a coffee please and now not that we're like killing it and like you know like much further beyond that but we are we understand our sales cycle better yeah. we understand like months that are really great for us you know, right you're staff. learning how to run a business yeah no, our and, staff and, figured out and so yeah. now sort of be like okay gentleman who ordered coffee and tried to like argue with us about funding piece like maybe this isn't we did the, not bring it up like maybe this isn't fit for you like it's not you don't need to come here for your coffee there are lots of other options that right. might be better safe for you and we're safe for people who come here to get a really great product find the brand that you carry and also because they know that their dollars are going a place that engages it right. So, right which yeah. i think people are expecting of of brands in general and i, I yes. you know um but we just to, and to close that out i think <laughs> you you would enjoy being one of the first i mean this is the first time we were making a public announcement about Ooh. that we were about to Ooh. Uh, <laughs> encapsulates all of this uh, okay decided that um saying you're either with us or against us may be a little antagonistic sure <laughs> so, too abrasive. yeah so, all really kind of had this little catchphrase i guess there well, is it's your your uh, and your creation i think i'll just say it and i'll see if it is like intuitively <laughs> in get you get it it's um feel the vibe or unsubscribe I like that's that. Yeah, right. that's it. Um, that's it's like you, you know, if this isn't your thing, you don't have to be here. Well, uh, I love that. I mean, I love the phrase. Obviously, it like it's just it's well written and and uh, memorable. Um, and I'm sure you're going to put it on a a banner or a or a uh, New York New York coffee cup or something that I've yeah. seen you do, that you do, that you've done. Um, but I think that I think you're I think what you're what you're ultimately describing is brand loyalty, authenticity, um, and the two of you leading with your passion, right? I was I was I interviewed um, uh, Jesse Blum uh, yeah. from Greenhawk Project, and and it was interesting that our, our conversation sort of really landed on this place of like that leadership and um, change is all about leading with your own passion. And if yeah. you are, if you lean into your passion and what makes you tick, that others will follow. You'll find your people, you'll find, uh, you know, you'll, you'll find a, a following. And, and I think that's, you know, what you guys are, are yeah. discovering and, and very good at it. So yeah. Okay. I, um, well, you know, what's interesting though, that I think is a, is a, is something that I I actually would like to ask you. Okay. So it's one thing for us to behave the, the way that we do as Sightsee because like we have a physical place. We are there. It's like a more closely tied to the to the like Charleston economy mm -hmm. in a neighborhood. So it is more like uh incumbent upon us to to act. But from someone might have the perspective of you that you don't have to. No one will, you know, like, it's not like on any given day I can walk to the corner of such and such and see you and talk to you 
as sure. part of my, you know, it's, and so. Yeah, I actually don't live in Charleston. I, I live in uh, yeah, you're the Netherlands. Trying to be broadcasting from the metaverse as we as yes, we're... exactly. Yeah, I smoke meat. But why is it that you would, as as a another, just like you know, I would say broadly speaking, privileged straight white male, take it upon yourself? Because folks that are are watching this conversation has been about what we have done sightseeing, mm -hmm. but you may not know the degree to which Ben has stepped up and this whole talk about, um, you know, recently we rallied a group of businesses to speak out in support of this commission without um, amendment that you were an instrumental that part was, of making that happen. Happened, yeah. Oh. Well, thank and you. So, uh, like, yeah. Yeah. Why do you bother doing that? And like folks that are listening, if you want to, to experience like, vulnerability and honesty in a way that is, is very compelling for policymaking. Tune into the last several council meetings and listen to, to your comments. And I mean that without exaggeration. So oh, like, thanks. why would you do that? Um, well, you know, I mean, I think back to sort of just to the conversation we had about, you know, using a business as a force for good. You know, I think uh, in 2016, um, you know, I was tired of yelling at the, <laughs> the TV and, and, and just being pissed off, on, and, you know, uh, with, with the feed and, and all these things. And, and yeah. you know, I, you know, at the same time, I'm raising twin girls and a 13-year-old boy, uh, yeah. you know, um, and a dog and a wife and the whole family thing and running a business and it, it just it I didn't have the time to get involved in a lot of community things because I was just trying to survive <laughs> the, the core yeah. things oh, yeah. and so it was a realization for me that well the one thing I do have that I already am spending time in is my business mm -hmm. and maybe I could use that as a as a vehicle right and 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 to your point, you know, I think we don't have a huge number of clients in Charleston. We have clients across North America. We work with sort of larger uh, nonprofits and uh, healthcare systems and other organizations that are, um, you know, they're all across the country. And so there's, there was this sense of, well, I, I can't make a difference locally in, in this, right? And so for us, first, it started with our industry because our industry, the tech industry is notoriously uh, you know, it, it, there are underrepresented groups that are, uh, or marginalized groups that are just underrepresented oh, yeah. in, in, in our industry. And it's, and it's a problem. And so, you know, we started a scholarship program uh, in tech to help um, students find a path. We started a mentorship program as well. And we do like a professional development day and, 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 a, and all these things to sort of help, you know, foster that. And, and, and we did focus that on our, you know, like we have an office in Toronto and one here in Charleston. And so we focused it, you know, our search in South Carolina and Ontario as like, you know, this is where we're, you know, look, we're looking at um, HBCUs in South Carolina. And we're trying to do things in the, in the community. Um, but I will say, you know, one of the things that, that you all did, for me at least, especially with the commission and other things happening was, and people like Mika Gadsden, uh, sure. where I'm, we started to really listen and see the, you'd be aware of the local things and um you know they always say all politics are local yeah and realizing that well you know i can make a difference in the larger tech industry or we can you know uh, that i really have to focus in on on some of the local things and it's and it's um where we can have much better impact and so yeah. you know when you you and and uh, uh some folks were doing the you know, putting together the list, it was like, wow, how can I help? And then a couple of my colleagues at Reason One were all like, yes, can we help too? And, and we just, you know, and, and even other businesses, I had some friends that own uh, Verde, for example, and they were like, yes, we want to get involved. And she reached out to friends in the local country, local first. And, yep. and it was just, it's, um, so what I'm, what you all helped story, which I feel like I'm, I, I owe something to you is, is that this local involvement, I, I feel closer to the local community, yeah. even though we might not have a lot of clients here, 
Uh, um, and that building that community feels really important to make that difference. So I don't know, that was a long, long word answer to sort of say, I, I that's, you know, yeah, I, it's, I, so, yeah. it's so fun to hear you describe all that in your, in your words. Yeah. No, I mean, I would just, I would, again, follow that up by anybody listening to this podcast, Ben Cash is the real Oh, yeah, yeah. This is not I a... Mean, <laughs> it's honestly, not a, yeah. it's interesting to hear you say that, like, you would go and read the blog posts that we've put out or, like, you know, join in, join forces for this letter because listening to your public comments, I feel like, oh, I should have called Ben and gotten a script. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Like, oh, next please. time I need to text Ben and be like, what are you going to say? And can I, like, like i'll throw in some synonyms yeah. so don't think oh no i'm just totally stealing out so we'll, we'll just steal from each other how about that yeah yeah, yeah. Really? all good he, um, a model oh, yeah. for it's just so it's yeah. fun kind of like as alice was just saying it's uh such a weird feeling to be so inspired by your peers and friends <laughs> and that's not weird. it is it's just such a it's such a unique sensation to be like, this is not just my friend. This is a, a model for me as well. Uh, that like, how can I be on the same level with Angel up to some simultaneous? It's also, yeah, on that same note, it's incredibly helpful to not feel like you are alone as a business advocating for social justice and feel like there are other folks joining in the fight who have similar backgrounds or similar concerns or, you know, like you talking about wanting to be able to hire a more diverse talent pool or things of that nature to just feel like there are other business owners who are aligned with us in this, that we can all work together and um, hopefully drive more collective action. And I hope that it I hope that what we're doing and what you're doing and like this letter that we put out just will inspire more business owners to keep engaging right. with this work because it it can't fall on just us or just you or or just the activist groups. Yeah, like that's it, the big because one. honestly, city council and local politicians i think start to really tune out the activist groups that they hear from all the time right and it's like of course from... they do and business is commerce and business right is, 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 yeah, yeah. The economy here and driving tourism here and so i really would like for all of the businesses who signed that letter alongside us in particular to keep showing up and keep engaging and recognizing yeah. that like, yeah, you can like, give me a call and ask me what we're planning to say. And we can all kind of pass ideas and, and make our efforts even stronger in that yeah. way. Well, there's, you know, that that letter was like the Charleston black square of businesses. Of yeah. Yeah. And, and so I don't know if you're how familiar with the, with B Corp, with B Corps, uh, that B Corp yeah. movement. Um, it's, uh, it, there, is, there is a larger movement for businesses um, where you can become a, a certified B Corporation, which is oh, more yeah. a benefit corporation. Way back with the B Corp. Yeah. And it's, it is, it is very, we, we are, we've been in the process for a long time. Uh, yeah. We're still, still spinning and hopefully going to be approved this year, uh, certified this year. Yeah, but it's, amazing. it's, well, it, well, what's what's great about it is it is a, it's a framework, right? It's a sort of a, a, a set of standards by which people can measure their impact on people and planet. So it's, it's a triple bottom line, right? Profit, okay. people, and planet. And it's you know how you treat your employees, how you treat the planet, um, you know the the policies and practices that you have in place, and it and it provides this sort of framework because I think you know. Uh, Oftentimes, these kinds of conversations live in the marketing department, <laughs> yeah. as opposed yeah. to the, yeah. Yeah. you know, the 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 front office. And and uh, I I think um, and that's too, you know I think what you are doing this without the label of B Corp, right? And I think and yeah. and uh, 
But I think if, if there are businesses, to your point, Allison, if there are businesses who do want to learn how to use their business as a force for good, they can look to uh, the B Corp movement. I think it's bcorporation.net. Um, and there's a, a B Labs is the independent group that does the yeah, certifications yeah. And, and things. Um, and it's a, it's a framework. It's, it's a, it, for businesses to, to do that. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very helpful resource, even just looking at the materials that they have just as like reflection points to think about yeah. how can I maybe make some even minor adjustments to what I do for us, like as a coffee shop, if we use all compostable takeaway products and compost coffee grounds and that, yeah, there is like a slightly higher cost associated with that for oh, us. Yeah. But um, but it's meaningful for us, especially living in a coastal community. So that that's sort of something that I was familiar with from doing a B Corp assessment in the past and yeah. applied to our current business model that um, I may not have thought about otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we're getting close to time here. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I, so I have, um two final questions cool one that have to take another hour <laughs> hour and a half but... yeah 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 we'll we'll uh we're not the, looking for Blair with the hook is going to come here and pull us off at some point um so um i've always been a fan of your your brand in general uh yeah. you know the, the voice the tone the, the identity the visual everything and um and I'm curious. So, what's what is your favorite brand and why? I just each, want each of you to answer uh, that. Um, I so you know the first brand that comes to mind coming off of our our past conversation. I think this is gonna be a bit of a surprise, uh, because in many respects it's not. But Ben and Jerry's is one of my favorite brands. Like, Corp, yeah. yeah, they. Yeah. I find it so inspiring that like such an innocuous, universally enjoyed product as just like ice cream in the ice cream aisle. I mean, I know they have shop yeah. ice cream primarily pint, that they will still say things that are effectively fucking elite. Yeah. And I think if like <laughs> if Ben and Jerry's has, can continue to be Ben and Jerry this like welcoming inviting you see a pint and you're like happy before you even eat it and yet be completely like you know considerately and, and deliberately but effectively unrestrained in right. how you speak out um it it's like that is inspiring to me. that's a that's a that's yeah. a model to me um and i would aim to be that big and for none of it to feel like show it's not like yeah. this fancy ad uh, no shade to nike they've got the best brand name and, and yeah, logo sure. And, um, sure but like there are a lot of ways in which what they do definitely is formative but i i feel like ben and jerry's by speaking out does nothing but like hurt their sales with a yeah. large population and if there was ever like a feel the vibe or unsubscribe kind of situation it's for me it's ben. yeah yeah it, i think it's about the like there's just as a someone who has to make payroll and run a business and support my family, right? The vulnerability it must take oh. to put something, put a strong stance out there that where you may lose customers, you may lose business, your business may suffer, yeah. but you're yeah. going to take that stance. So just the sheer vulnerability, I think, is uh, is what stands out for me in that brand. So like, kudos, uh, Allison. What about what about you? What they do too, just. One more thing is that whenever I've seen anything Ben and Jerry's has like said about social justice, racial justice, environmental justice, they also tend to attach resources to what they're putting out there to help people find ways to learn about these topics or you know things that you should read or here's how to engage. And I feel like that is a big model for us. Yeah. I'm going to pick, I, I totally agree with you in terms of like a big national, multinational, I don't know, are yeah. they all over the world? Brand Ben & Jerry's is, is a big inspiration. Um, 
but I'm going to go on a smaller scale and pick some of our local friends that are a constant source of inspiration for like tangibly on a day-to-day -day basis. And those are folks that run JSTAR. Our friends, yeah. Jess and Eric, oh, they yeah. as a brand and as a business have always been so authentic and so intentional. I mean, Eric started it originally sewing, teaching himself. He was a coder. He's a computer scientist. Oh, wow. He's not a sewist. He's not a, you know, he taught <laughs> himself how to cut leather and sew and was just making wow. his living room. And then you know, later on was wise enough to bring Jess on board to help grow the business yeah. and hire a team. And they've out, you know, they've outgrown one brick and mortar, moved to another, and they still have employees that have been with them since their very first shop that opened yeah. five years ago. And to me, that says so much when a brand can retain employees in that way and create a really like wonderful and enriching culture yep. and they built it from nothing they didn't they didn't have funding they didn't have yeah they didn't do a kickstarter even like we did they just started it from an idea and now they have wholesale accounts over the country and i have a jay stark bag yeah, i freaking yeah. love them like, product is incredible too it's not even just like the people are amazing people the product is amazing so yeah. they are like i feel a um a local story for a brand and a business with a brick and mortar space that yeah. has grown in this very thoughtful way that yeah. I think brings us um yeah a, a lot of inspiration more like tangibly. Yeah that's a really um, good point. than corporation yeah. way. So Jay Yeah fantastic. Okay. All right. Well, um, it's just been so so much fun talking to you. Um, sure. Thanks for yeah. jumping on the Zoom with me. No, this um, is a very indulgent. I uh, yeah. We don't it, thank <laughs> you for for enduring us just kind of like pontificating <laughs> about our. Oh, business. it's all good. It's great. Uh, it's very, <laughs> yeah. And um, um, so sightseeshop.com. That's um, nice. 125 and a half line street, uh, best damn cup of coffee, uh, hey. on the planet. When, when, when my, when Maria and I are like on our way somewhere, or we were, we just on a Sunday morning, Saturday morning, we were like, we got to have a, a, a good cup. We, we know we can come to 125 and a half. Um, and, uh, well, so, shout out to our, shout out to our entire team. I don't know at what yes. point in the future people will be listening. But it, uh, on this day, um, we have uh, Carlo and Susie, and they are they are phenomenal. We're very thankful. Fantastic. And our right on. Yeah. yeah. And you. Well, thanks. All right. Well, I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna close with uh, I'm gonna steal your line. Uh, feel the vibe or unsubscribe. That's it. That's go. it. You got it. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Joel and Allison. Take care. Thank you, Ben. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this has been an episode of For the Better. For more information, episodes, or to be a guest on the podcast, visit forthebetterpodcast.com. Thanks, all. Be well.